Hey, it's Jared. I have three Apple Reminder lists that you simply can't live without. Now, I've been using Apple Reminders for the last, I'd say, five or six months uh, completely. I haven't been using any other apps, and I come from using Todoist and Notion and all other sorts of apps that tend to have a lot more features. But in Apple Reminders, I found that it has the feature set that makes sense for me, and the Reminders or the To-Do app that you'll use is the one that is simple and and doesn't have a bunch of friction. And that's what I had done is added a whole bunch of friction into the process. And I have simplified my system and continue to look for ways to simplify things when my natural tendency is to add complexity. So let's take a look at some of these lists that I have created. First of all, we have the inbox. This is where we drop everything that is new that I have not yet organized. The importance of having an inbox is that you have a simple place to throw new reminders and new tasks, whether you create them using Siri, you create them on your watch or whatever device, you just need an easy way to get reminders or to-dos into the reminders app. And then once they're there, later on when you have a little bit more time, you can come into the app and you can sort all of these out. So let's take a look at creating this folder first or this list. First, you'd wanna go down to add list and we would just call it inbox and you give it a color, choose an icon for it and hit done. And it's going to create it and add it down here to the bottom of the list. Now to get it all the way up here, you tap on this icon, choose edit lists, and then you just grab the handle and drag it all the way up. So you'll see here, if I tap and hold on one of these, I can drag it all the way up to the very top. And once you get to the top, you'll have your inbox there. You'll notice that there are some lists here that just have check boxes and some that have the little delete icon next to it. The three that have the delete icon next to it, lists that I added, and the other ones are lists that are default to the Apple Reminders app you'll see that I turned off assigned to me. Uh, I do use Apple Reminders with my family, but I typically don't have anybody assigning me any tasks, and so I just unchecked that one. But you can uncheck any of these that don't make sense to you and clean up the folders that you have showing up up here. You can see I have eight of them. But the inbox is where I send all of my new stuff. And you'll also wanna change the default list that reminders go into. So you'll wanna go to your settings app, We'll type in settings and tap on settings here. And then we will tap on reminders to get to our reminders app settings, which is right here. We'll tap there. And then when we scroll down, you can see that default list, for whatever reason, it changed it to courses. That's weird. I want my default list to be on inbox. And you can set that on a per device basis. I know on my iPhone, it's set to inbox. For some reason on this iPad mini, it got changed to another one. But you wanna set that to your inbox so that when you create new reminders, they're automatically gonna go into the inbox. And then later on in the day, I might come through here and add a time to them if I didn't do that. I might send them over to the appropriate list. It's very easy for me to do that. I can tap here, tap on the little eye icon, swipe down towards the bottom, and then change the list to something else. So I might change that one to work and hit done. Now it's out of my inbox. And then I'm just cleaning out my inbox. And so by the end of the day or at the end of the day, I would want my inbox essentially to be at zero and not have any additional tasks left in it. Now the next list that I create is a smart list and it takes all of my priority tasks and puts them into a folder or a group called daily focus. My daily focus is where I go to see what I should be working on and what my priority should be for the day. Let's take a look at that and I'll show you how to set it up. So here is my daily focus and you can see it is a group. These are lists down here. These are groups that have multiple lists in them. And so if I tap on the little icon there and twirl it down, you can see I have low, medium, and top priority. And you can see right here, low, medium, and top priority. And I can also go and reorder these. Perhaps I want top priority on the top and medium priority in the middle, I can reorder so that the high priority is up top and low is down below, just as you can see now. But it's really easy to set 
set up your reminders so that they show up in these three places. You can see that I have priority three here, priority two here, and I don't have any priority one tasks left. You can look in my inbox and these tasks down here don't have a priority to them. So they wouldn't even show up in that section at all. But if I wanted to go and edit this one and add the priority of one, we'll change that priority to low, which is a priority of one. And then when we go back into the daily focus, you can see now that we have cancel OnStar there as one of the low priority tasks. Now let me show you how to set up these lists. You can hit add list and create a new list. So we'll just call this one high and then we're going to choose the list type and make it smart list and then tap on edit filters. Now there's all these different filters that you can change and assign uh, to customize what will show up in this list. So this isn't gonna be a list that you manually add anything to. This is gonna be a list that shows items based on the criteria for that reminder. So we wanna make sure that the date is set for today because we just wanna see today only. And then we're gonna go to priority and we'll set high priority. So today and high priority have to be true. You can see include reminders matching all all filters, which means it has to match today's date and it has to have a high priority. You can also change that to any, which means it can have either one of these, but we want it to have both. Let's go ahead and hit done and we'll just leave the color and the icon the same. You can see it created that down here, and now we have those three high priority items that are in this list. Now all you have to do is create additional lists for medium and low priority, and you set it up the same. To look at medium priority, you can see that I have today set and medium as the priority instead. And for our low priority, it's essentially the exact same thing, except we chose low as the priority. Now what you would do is create a group. So you'd hit add group, and then you would drag the three of those into the group and then hit done when you're done. And you can see I can twirl this up and down so I can minimize it. And when I tap on daily focus, I get all three of them in here. Or if I twirl this down, I can see them one by one. So I can see high priority, medium, and low priority or I can see all three of them grouped together. And as I work through these and check them off, then it empties out this section, and then the next day, so tomorrow, I come back to my daily focus, and I have new items that are showing up in here that have the next day, and then also have the appropriate priority. So when I go into my inbox, and I'm cleaning out my inbox, I'm choosing priorities for different items as well. So I'm probably not going to get to this one today, so I might change the date uh, to tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and uh, set a priority for that as well. Let's change the priority because now it's overdue. I definitely need to get that one up and I'm gonna move the list to work and hit done so it's no longer in my inbox. Probably not going to film this video today either and so we'll go ahead and reschedule that. It already has a priority set and uh, just need to move it to the appropriate list and that's how I filter and get through all of my stuff. So inbox is where things go first. Daily focus is where I spend my time during the day. Now, another thing that I've started using Apple reminders for is to remind me when I have payments coming up for different bills and different subscriptions. You know, in a perfect world, everything that we're subscribed to, every Netflix or whatever subscription that we have, we would get a nice email with enough time in advance to let us know that the billing is coming up so that way if we wanted to cancel cancel it, we could cancel it. How many things have you signed up for and you've been billed for it the next time and you were upset because you no longer use that, you forgot to cancel it. Now, I don't want that to happen to me. I'm tired of it. And so I created a list and reminders and started adding all of those items. Let me show you what it looks like. So if I scroll down to the bottom under financial, I have a whole bunch of different items in two different categories. I have the subscriptions category and then I also have the bills category. With these two sections in this one list, I can see all of the different things that I'm subscribed to and the date. Now, what I've done is I added a date that it's due and the dollar amount, and then I added a reminder date so that I could be reminded. I wanna be reminded in advance so that I can make the decision 
do I keep this or does it need to be canceled? And I want to handle that far enough in advance to where I don't accidentally miss that and then get billed for it once again, because a lot of these are yearly subscriptions. And with yearly, that's a whole year that I may have paid for that I didn't want it because maybe I don't need that tool anymore or whatever service it is. And so I created this list so that I could be reminded of all of the different bills and all of the different subscriptions. And so far doing that has not only just brought a ton of awareness to all of the things that I was subscribed to, not only just personally for around my household, but also business subscriptions. Those are the ones that get away from you because you have a tool that you need, you sign up for it, maybe you even get a good price on it initially. And then when it comes around again, you end up getting billed for it and it's expensive and you're not using it anymore. In the past, I simply used a note and Apple Notes and that didn't work because Apple notes, although it's great and I can make a list of all of those things, it was only as good as me going in and checking that list all the time. And I just wasn't doing it. I wasn't checking the list. And so that list became outdated and I ended up getting billed for things that I didn't use anymore. And adding them into Apple reminders means that I'm going to get a notification ahead of time. Some things I definitely want to keep, but I want to be aware of those decisions every single time. It's not a list of things that I could just cancel now. I'm aware that maybe I already want to cancel them. It's a list of things that I'm going to be billed for, and I can make that decision every time that that billing cycle comes up because I, if I want to keep it, great. I just check it off, and then next month or next year, it comes back around again, and I'm reminded of that fee again. Maybe I can even consolidate. I Through this process, I learned of a few things that I can consolidate as well which was great. So I'm saving money. I'm remaining aware of things proactively instead of being reactive to them showing up on my credit card statement instead. So those are the three lists that I've created that I think are game changers for Apple reminders. Using that inbox as a quick and easy place to drop all of your new reminders, having the daily focus so that you can just see what's important for the day and not get overwhelmed with all of the reminders and tasks that we might have. And then having the financial section to set reminders for all of those things that we should get notifications from anyways, but we don't so that we don't have any surprises on our bills. If you found this useful, you'll absolutely love my Apple productivity course. That is linked down below, so check that out. I still have early bird pricing enabled on it, so you might wanna take advantage of that. If you're looking to get more out of your Apple devices, you're gonna absolutely love the course. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. Give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.